Have you Grange today and celebrated the Grange way of life? We've got some information and some inspiration for you. I'm Walter Boomsma, Communications Director for the Maine State Grange, welcoming you to another program of Resources for Granges. Welcome to another Grange Resources Program in which we try to provide information and stimulate your thinking. I'm Walter Boomsma, your host and Communications Director for the Maine State Grange. We have a really interesting topic today considering how cold it is and there's a lot of snow on the ground. We're gonna talk about touring gardens and a very successful program that was run by Victor Grange. Joining me today to talk about that is Barbara Bailey from Victor Grange. Barbara's the lecturer at Vic Victor Grange and I think she's also a real source of energy for the Grange mm -hmm. in general. Thanks for being here, Barb. You're welcome and thanks for inviting me. Just as background, um, this program actually started back in 2017, but I became aware of it in a recent Maine Grange Farmers Initiative meeting. Uh, we were talking about finding resources for granges um, that want to promote gardening and agriculture and farming. And we discovered, lo and behold, Victor Grange had some experiences that were really cool and worth noting. Um, so Barb, can you tell us a little bit about Victor Grange? Victor Grange itself started in 1874, and we've been going strong since. And, uh, you know, we're part of the community and do quite a bit with the community. And yet we're still our little island and uh, do what we need to do to keep going, I guess. Um, and, uh, you know, we're trying hard to keep those connections open with the community and the people and friends of the Grange and all of those people. Great. And, and you have, I think you said you have somewhere around 35, 40 members? Yep. Somewhere around there, you know, give or take. It sounds awful, but sometimes a death or two. <laughs> <laughs> we need more births. <laughs> yes, exactly. The younger people we need, yes. <laughs> you get tired of talking about um, obituaries. You really like to talk right. about births. But, but that's yes. actually not a bad number. It's a, that, that's a reasonable. I've actually heard people say that there can be a disadvantage to having too many members, too big. I've heard, that, I've heard that same thing. And part of our thing, you know, with the 35, 40, um, you know, we'll say at least 50% of them are at the age where they can't do much for us. But if we have a dinner, they'll come or send their kids to get one for them to go or whatever. And, you know, they just aren't there at every meeting, but they like knowing what goes on. So, I sometimes do a newsletter and pass, send it out to everybody so they can know. My firm belief is if people know what's going on in your Grange, um, they won't be so um, afraid to come to a meeting or come and get involved. So I try to keep people informed. Yeah, give them a reason to come <laughs> right. beyond the fact that it's expected. You know, just, it, you know it's, it sounds like you have a, a, a really good foundation, both in terms of membership and the stuff you're doing. And um, we do have, um, kind of steal your thunder in a sense, but we do have a fairly complete handbook of how you put this program together. Uh, and that's gonna be available to people. But tell us a little bit about how, how that first tour came about. How did that, where did the idea come from? How did that get started? If you go back to 217, it was before COVID and all of those things. <laughs> and um, we were finding that there was, many more people, um, and it sounds awful to some people, but we found here in central Maine that there was many more people who wanted to get into gardening, who wanted to get into raising bees or chickens or whatever. And so we started having, you know, okay, let's have somebody come in from the extension for beekeeping or chickens or whatever. And um, then the gardening thing came in. And to be honest, one of the reasons I did it was because I have a neighbor who has gardens but she also they also have chickens and they put tunnels through their walkways in their gardens and the chickens go through the tunnels and they eat all the weeds you know and then they move the tunnels around and we sometimes joke that it's the chicken garden and um you know they share what they do but other people when I talked about it would say what do you mean they do that and then then I said you know we ought to have a garden tour and then at the meeting one of the meetings I said, you know, guys, there's a bunch of you who do gardens and they're just plain old average gardens, but there's a little, you know, a little pull for each one of them. You know, it's like this one does this, that one does that, be it vegetable or flowers, it didn't matter. 
And I felt that if we could show people, and that was part of the other thing was people were asking how to do raised garden beds, especially for seniors and things and, and different, um, you know, no pesticides and stuff. And so I felt like agriculture was coming into the spotlight and I wanted to incorporate that because that's what the Grange was stand, you know, founded on agricultural connections and stuff. And I felt that, you know, we could maybe pull those people in from the community and, you know, um, help us and help them and even work with um we worked with a school uh come here after um school main school garden connections even mm -hmm. and and we have um we have johnny selected seeds in the area so you know we knew we could do stuff so i just said to them hey here's an idea i've never been to one what do you guys think and they said oh my gosh what a great idea but then <laughs> you know that's how it went. Yes, let's do <laughs> kind it. <of> more, <laughs> <laughs> and it isn't, it's always fun to watch an idea and how right. sometimes they'll just grow and expand on their own. You know, it's funny because back just actually probably just before 2017, um, I was actively involved in extension. I was president of the Piscataquis County, um, what is it called? The Ex Executive Committee. Um, and we were seeing the same thing. Um, and and you, you reminded me of it because we were doing some programming like how to raise a tomato plant in a bag of garden soil. Mm -hmm. um, and um, what did they call it? Straw bale, straw bale garden. Right. Um, right. So you're right. And, and I don't know that that's gone away. Um, I, I sense that there's still a lot of interest in that. Um, so it sounds like your, your members pretty much very quickly and easily got excited about the idea. Um, and you did the first tour in 2017. Right. Am I remembering correctly that it rained? <laughs> oh, it rained. Yeah. Yes, really hard that morning. And I wasn't <laughs> smart enough to think of a rain date. So I had to I had to laugh and we served we served um meals, you know, we had a, a picnic lunch to go kind of thing. But anyway, um people started arriving in their raincoats and their galoshes and whatever to go on the garden tour for they didn't care if it was just two or three gardens, they were ready to go. They wanted a meal and then we're gonna go. And it ended up being fairly well. I think the hours were wrong in my case, um, but we learned, you know, little by little. But what I tried to stress was I don't want perfect gardens. I don't want it to be so professional that you have to wear booties in the garden, etc. I want people to see how much fun they can have, what different ways you can do things. And I just want them to understand it's stress relief. It's it's good for your own uh, self-worth and, you know, to eat if you do choose vegetables, et cetera. So, and even the flowers, they, you know, end up giving them to neighbors and things or old people to, to make their day brighter. So I just wanted to share that in the Grange way, I guess I can say. Yeah, well, and, and, it, and that truly is the Grange heritage. I mean, <clears throat> we think of it as farming, but anything agriculturally related, um, and I think it's kind of ironic that you're not really a gardener. <laughs> I don't garden at all. Never been on a garden tour. I don't have anything but a few flowers in the summer. Take your own tour. Of... <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, needless to say, I took lots of tours, but, um, yeah. you know, it was something that when I tried to explain to them, because everybody was like, oh, no, I don't want a garden tour. Man, I'll have weeds. I'll have this. I'll have that. That won't be up. This will be gone by. You know, and I said, it's not the point. The point is to show people, look, it's an evolution. It goes on and on. It can be one thing one day and the next week it's another, you know, just let's just go with it. And so I, on purpose, decided to have only one professional garden each year. Um, so that, you know, one master garden so that they wouldn't be intimidated by the beautiful, you know, beauty and all the work and all the, you know, whatever. Um, I wanted them to just see things. And, and I think that was the call. And when I asked them all to think about people with gardens, you know, and, and ask them to go and ask them, the others, you know, find a garden for me we came up with nine or ten instantly you know it was not a big deal so that's, that's great and and you kind of anticipated a question because i was going to ask if it was difficult to get gardeners to participate and i think I, it sounds to me like part of the magic if there's magic in this was what you were describing it's not a display of gardening it, it truly is an immersion, I guess, for lack of a better word, allowing people to get immersed in, in what that gardening experience is like and, and that you don't do it for show. You, 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 you may have different reasons. I mean, you mentioned relaxing and so on. Um, and yeah, I can see why this, this, this would be 
cool, for lack of a better word. Yeah. Um, you've already mentioned that you didn't have a rain date, and that was one lesson. Yeah. You what one were of some of the mistakes. other lessons you learned uh, from that first tour? Um, another thing we had very, you know, because of the rain that first year, we only had like 20 participants or something. And our gardens were spread out about, oh, I don't know, a 15 mile radius or whatever. But what I did was I tried to get everybody to not start at garden number one. You know, like the next, you know, the next people who brought tickets, let's, I would say, do you think you could start at two, you know, and at three and, you know, just reverse your direction, you know, to get back to one and two or whatever. And people said they liked that because, you know, you didn't have a whole bunch of people at their garden at once and then nobody for the rest of the day. I don't know in a professional and a big, you know, if you had a big turnout, how you could do it, but I'm assuming somebody could help you figure that out. I just, um, you know, I just tried to do it and, um, you know, it worked well that year. So, yeah, well, the rain probably helped. No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, it did help. It really did. But anyway, actually, what happened was it because it stopped raining around lunchtime. I actually had people call my cell phone that ran the gardens and said, you know, we don't have to give up at three. You know, it rained all morning. We could stay till five or six. It's okay with us. But how would you get a hold of those people who were already on the tour? I didn't have cell phones for them. And that was the next thing. You know, if I did it the second year, I got cell phone numbers just in case so that if something came up, I could call and say, hey, you know, they had to leave. There was an emergency. Don't go to garden number five. Oh. So... So, so a fair amount of, and, and you, <laughs> you did learn a lot from that first one, obviously. Right. Um, so collecting cell phone numbers of the people on the tour, um, a lot of coordination, I guess, um, and preparation. I mean, at least in the pre preparation stages, I know if people do download that little booklet, um, they, they'll see, as I recall, I think in it, there's a map or maybe right you know, yeah there's there, a map. Okay, there is a map uh you actually put together kind of like a hand-drawn map right how to do the tour and i like the the idea of <clears throat> excuse me occasionally starting people in different places we're going to talk mm -hmm. about could you do this today yes. with the situation we have with covid and and that may be one of the ways you would accomplish that um so we'll we'll get to that um <clears throat> so uh, the other book, thing walter while i'm thinking of it is i I assigned each garden a number and I didn't use their names on purpose no. so that somebody couldn't go bug, bug them next week or the week before <laughs> or something and say, hey, I want to go through your garden. You're going to be on the tour. Yeah. And, you know, they wouldn't be disrupted and disturbed. And we didn't put our signs out with the numbers till that morning. That's I great. gave each gardener yeah. their own sign and said, what, at the, you know, in the morning when you're ready, put your sign out, you know, number out and they'll know what it is. So. Great. Um, uh, I'm Walter Bumsma, Communications Director for the Maine State Grange. We're talking with Barbara Bailey, and we're learning a whole lot about how to do one of these things <laughs> with a minimal amount of disruption and pain. There actually can be a whole lot of fun. Um, so let's go to the second tour. It didn't rain, uh, and that it was even better, I guess, uh, bigger and better. Um, what were some of the things that you, you've already mentioned a few, but what were some of the things that you changed or did differently the second time around? I know you actually, I don't think I was going to say, I don't think that we had that much. We extended the hours because, um, you know, if we had gotten, you know, a, a whole lot more participants, we didn't want to, I believe we went from nine to three originally the first year. And the second year, I think we went to nine to five or something, but, you know, it just extended the hours in case. And, um, but outside of that, except for adding a few more guidance now, two things happened that second year is some of the people who did it the first year were kind of disappointed because they didn't have a whole lot of people come around because the time was so short. Like I said, they would call me and say, hey, I'll stay here till five or six if they still want to come. <laughs> but I didn't know how to reach them. So I couldn't tell them that. So mm -hmm. um, we extended the hours and, you know, and I had to emphasize the second year, I said to them, there are 12 gardens this year, but you do not have to go to all of them, pick and choose which ones you want, you know, whatever, uh, you seem to gravitate to, you know, for your type of gardening, be it flowers or, or vegetables or something, or the chicken garden was a big drawer. <laughs> <laughs> and we do call it the chicken garden to this day. God love them. And uh, so anyway, um, uh, you know, that in, in, uh, changed for us. And the first year we had Kennebec Montessori School Garden in there, I mm. think, or the second year. We also had Skowhegan Historical Society. They have a vintage garden and they're only like 16 miles from the Grange in Fairfield. 
And some of the gardens that, in fact, the chicken gardens less than seven miles from the, the Skowhegan Historical Society's garden. So if they came out to the chicken garden and they wanted to go the rest of the way to the vintage garden, they could. Um, one of our nurseries had, um, gosh, what's the name of it, where they you don't use uh, dirt and you don't plant in the, uh, oh, they, they opened up their um, garden, uh, gardening that way. Gosh, I can't even think. But anyway, uh, so that was a different type of garden. So we had different ways to garden, but also different facilities gardening. And I'll tell you, um, half the people came out with flowers and vegetables and stuff from their garden tour, something that was ready for them. So it was really a great community project and good feeling project for the Grange. We didn't make, if we made 50 bucks, you know, on two, two garden tours, we did. But that wasn't the point. The point was to connect people and make them feel good. And some people even made themselves cards and said to the people that came around, you know, if you've got never gotten before and you've got questions, you could call me. I would help you, you know. Mm -hmm. And and you know, people got garlic at one of the gardens. This guy just you know loved garlic and he gave everybody bombs of garlic and stuff. So you know, it was a good feeling. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, no, I, I, I yeah, not, I th it's, it's really interesting because in a way, not a lot of structure. I mean, right. you know, um, <laughs> certainly a fair amount of organizing and planning, but, but not a lot of structure. Um, right. And, and just at some level, kind of just trusting people, expecting right. people, which I have to ask you because you had mentioned this to me and, and um, I think it's a story worth telling. Okay. <laughs> uh, because, <laughs> Um, there was a woman, and I honestly don't remember if it was the first. Oh one, yes, uh, yep. The woman who had some health with issues. cancer. Yeah, she had can cancer. Can you talk about that a little? I will. Um, she was, I think, our second year, and um, she had had cancer, and at some point her treatments, you know, changed a little bit, and she wasn't feeling really good, and she wasn't sure she wanted to continue with the garden tour, and. I, I'm a person who goes with the flow and like I won't print up the programs till the night before the tour, for instance, because I if something changes, you know, whatever. Um, and she said, Bob, I'll tell you what, if I can go out and visit with people when they come, I will. But if I can't, I'll tell you what I'd like to do. I haven't had a great amount of time to weed my garden and, and take care of it like I usually do because I just don't feel up to it. But I'll tell you what I'd like to do. And she took a, a little red wagon and put a whole bunch of... Uh, little pots, you know, that you get when you go buy seedlings and things, and a whole bunch of trowels and said, if anybody wants to help me weed my garden and thin things out, I would love it. Take as much as you want to help me out. And um, we had more people say that was their most fun garden because they could go help her out a little bit and get a sample of plants or whatever, you know, she was thinning out and she had them set out. So she, you know, help me or whatever she put up for signs, but it ended up being one of the highlights beside the chicken garden was going help and get their own samples of plants and stuff. So, yeah. And it, it, I love that story. I mean, <laughs> it makes me kind of well up yeah, because it does. It, that's the spirit of the Grange. I mean, right. you know, it, helping each other and, and um, we, there's a Grange up here in my area and I can identify them East Sangerville Grange. Um, their number is 177. That becomes important. Uh, and they kind of, uh, spontaneously a couple of years ago um just they have a lot of farmers in the grange they call they started calling themselves the fighting one or i think it was the fighting 177 sure. and what they would do is similar to what you're describing if there was a farmer who like got behind on their weeding or, or whatever kind of gardening work the, the grange would go in moss you know as a group um and and weed <laughs> yeah. or prune or whatever um and and to hear those kind of human interests are, so i i really believe and, and and i think you would agree that people are looking for that they're and particularly over the last year people are looking for a sense of community they're looking for a way to connect to other people and and i think that story kind of is is one of the j just epitomes of of what you guys were trying to accomplish i mean you even said we weren't trying to raise funds um right. and i guess you didn't <laughs> although i think you, you 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 certainly could i mean it right. certainly could uh, have some financial benefit um but but just keeping it simple and fun yes. and fun that's the other thing and making it fun right. so and um, you know, one of the gardens real quick had a little girl there. She was like five or six years old and her mother 
went to college for bugs or whatever it's called. There's a name for it. Um, you know, good bugs, bad bugs kind of thing. And she has a wonderful raised bed garden and whatever, all vegetables and things. But anyway, the little girl learned quite a bit. And she, even at five or six, would go around with the people coming to the garden tour and say, see, these bugs are good for you. That's okay. That's a, this bug and, you know, whatever. And those are no good. You don't want those, you know, so throw them out. And, and so she was enjoying, and I think one of the pictures on the thank you note that we sent out was her in front of the number garden whatever she was just laughing and being all excited because somebody was coming down the road and going to stop at the garden and so that in itself is a big deal to have those young people involved and and whether they know bugs or not she just happened to you know yeah. and and yeah. was excited about it so yeah that's cool i i i, I think it's a just a, a a natural but both from a legacy or or uh, kind of history heritage of the Grange but also in terms of what what it can do from a community point of view um, you, you almost can't measure the potential benefits and and I said we would talk a little bit about doing it during the pandemic um, we don't have a whole lot of time but right. um, I think from the description you've been giving given uh, giving given given <laughs> yeah. giving <laughs> See, we are not perfect. You, no, even we are on the not. air, we're That's not right. perfect. Um, <laughs> it, it, I think it'd be very possible to do the to do this because you're not bringing a bunch of people into one place, um, and just with a little coordination and and uh, scheduling, maybe um, you know, starting people in different places, that kind of stuff. Uh, I I could see how this could work fairly easily. I mean, you with might COVID. Not have in your program, uh, and again, that's in the booklet that people can get, uh, in the program, you could actually have some guidelines. You know, mm -hmm. if you get to a garden and it's crowded, do yes. this, you know, uh, and so on. And and who knows, we may be much further uh, along, if you will, yeah. in terms of being open uh, by the time this would be, I, I honestly don't remember, April, when, when did you do these? No, I think we did them at the beginning, in the middle of May or first that of June. I don't even remember, but I know <laughs> that some people said you don't want to do them in April because nothing's up yet. And then, right. in, uh, you know, a few weeks later, one year, everything was up and gone by by the time, you know, one set of stuff. And, you know, but then they could see, you know, other stuff blossoming and growing. And that's nature. You know, we have to. Mm -hmm. And I'm famous for going with the flow. So, you know, I'm not <laughs> a very precise person and I go with whatever happens next. And, you know, I just go with the flow. But I did say to them when they bought their tickets, I did say, now, if you go to a garden and there's two or three cars there, can you just skip that one and go to the next one and then come back if you could, um, because we don't want a bunch of people at every garden. But we really didn't end up running into that that often. Um, mm -hmm. The master garden actually had, you know, people that stayed an hour or two sometimes, depending on what kind of uh, level they were at at gardening, because they just wanted to see a master garden because you don't always get to see them. Um, and whatever, but um, most of it went very smoothly and there was no problems. Great. Everybody enjoyed it. What advice? I, oh, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say one other thing I wanted to say is that we did have a, a man and a wife who did it and they've just, she's just planted flowers wherever she went and she loved flowers and she works and she enjoys it, but nobody's ever really, I'm going to say, appreciated her work. And the day that, um, I had, I told them I'd all make an, uh, you know, I'd give them all a picnic lunch. Uh, we put them in a seedling tray with a red and white checkered napkin and we made roll-ups and, you know, carrot and celery sticks and, you know, whatever we could, that was good for you. And iced tea and lemonade and stuff. And we sold them, but we also said we'd give every person who had a garden, we'd give them lunch. So I called up and said, okay, are you guys ready for your lunch? I'm going to send it out. And the man said to me, are you kidding, Bob? She's not going to stop to eat because she's having the time of her life. People are actually enjoying her work and appreciating everything. And she's just not going to stop until this is over to eat. So you can send it, but I'll just refrigerate it until she's ready to eat. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, that's, yeah. And, and, and uh, have fun. I mean, that's the thing. It, it sounds like I want to see the chicken garden. <laughs> yeah, the chicken garden. I think there's a a picture of the chickens inside the tunnel uh, on that thank you card. Um, you'll see the wire mesh kind of in a round uh, horseshoe kind of thing. Um, and they really, what they do is they end up, you know, fertilizing the places you're going to plant next year and keeping the true. walkways, 
clean this year. So, you know, it's, it's just my, I happen to take care of those chickens frequently because they're a neighbor. So, you know, I call it the chicken garden. I get chicken duty. I get the chicken garden duty, whatever. So. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Well, we really only scratched the surface um, today and uh, I'm sure there's a whole lot more. We could probably go on and on for a long time. Uh, a lot of different things to consider. I know, and just to give people a hint, that you even checked on uh, your liability and insurance. Um, Absolutely. And that ended up not being too difficult. So I'm going to encourage people to get the booklet um, the, the, for, I guess that's the right terminology. Um, and with spring coming soon, it's not too early, certainly, to start planning for this. Um, and I also know, Barb, that you're willing to, to consult, uh, be, mm -hmm. you know, and your contact information is in that booklet. So okay. if a Grange has an interest in doing this, um, take advantage of those resources. That's, that's what this program is all about. Um, um, so the booklet's can available. I just on interrupt the main interrupt just for a second? Because I, what I'd like you to do is just tell them to leave me a message because there's so much yes. scam going on right now. I won't pick up the phone unless I know what it's something <laughs> I want. Yep. So just leave a message and usually if I'm here, I'll pick it right up. But anyway, just in case, because, and the other thing is the liability thing cost us nothing because yep. we were not going to make over $500 for the ah, insurance. Interesting. So okay. that was very good that they covered us for 24 hours That's flat true. and it was free. Now, if you make over $500, your insurance costs will be a thousand. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and I, I think the instructions for contacting you include leaving a message. Okay. Um, you know, and just, and if you want to talk to, if anybody wants to talk to you about your car warranty, <laughs> not going to happen. Not going to happen. Um, so, uh, visit the Main State Grange website. <clears throat> it's Main State Grange, all one word, no spaces, dot org, O R G. Uh, and when you get to the website, click the resources tab at the top, and that will take you both to this video and to the uh, to a download of the PDF file um, of the booklet. And and try and have fun with this. I, I'd like to see a lot of tours taking place this spring. I think we're ripe for it. So to our listeners, thank you for joining us today. We hope you found this helpful and encouraging. If you have ideas for future topics you'd like to hear, send an email to webmaster at mainstategrange.org, or you can submit it directly through the website. Remember, we're Grangers, and we're here to help each other.